time will tell, time will tell. Last year was the hottest summer ever in record, and the five hottest summers ever recorded were all in the 1980s. The greenhouse effect is happening. Scientists around the world are unanimous. The planet is sick. The signs are incontrovertible, and we have less than 10 years to make the decisions to turn it around. people forming together and realising that uh, what we're witnessing is uh, it's not the destruction of scenery, this is the dismembering of the life support systems of the earth and that uh, people are realising that the earth is a living organism and that the rainforests are one of the vital organs so that if we want to have any future ourselves or if we want to uh, ensure a future for complex life on earth we can't allow the rainforests to disappear. It's a treasure of the age of the trees. A forest is the air that comes out of that land. A forest is the water. It's the soil with all of the microorganisms in it. It's the wildlife and yes, it's trees. But that whole system is a forest. I believe this is our last chance. I think that they're killing the forest. I don't just think this, I live there. I've seen the miles and miles of clear cut. I've seen the ruined streams. I've seen the ruined soil. The forest can't recover if you continue to cut it and cut it. And these companies don't care. All they want is profits. All they want is money. Their plan is to cut and run, and we're not going to let them do it. The answer is whatever it takes. The reason we called for Redwood Summer this year is because the crisis is this year. We don't have any more years to wait. This is not a symbolic act. We hope to literally slow down the logging by using our bodies nonviolently this summer. And uh, we hope to do that so that there'll be something left to save by the time any legislation can be passed to regulate them. We are cutting chainsaws, killing the trees, disrupting everything that lives in peace. Our animal friends are on the run, but there's nowhere to go when the job is done. People have gotten together uh, several ballot initiatives to try to restrict the logging. The reaction of the timber industry has been to try to take every tree that they can as fast as they can to make any regulations a moot point by the time that they're passed. And once, if any, if any laws are passed in the fall, they'll immediately sue and hold them up in court long enough for them to literally destroy the ecosystem. So we see this as a crisis, it's either now or never. How can we stand by while this all takes place? We've got to stop this inhuman race. No compromise. No compromise, no compromise in defense of Mother Earth. Earth first. Don't we know there's gonna come a time when the tables will be turned? What will we say to answer for these crimes and for our lessons never learned?
practices that consider their future. There's not going to be jobs for y'all children. There's not going to be jobs. That's going to be shut down in a generation. Boy, they got them working, what, 58 hours a week? That's what I heard. That's what I read in the paper. 58 hours a week in the mill? You know, you're milling your children's jobs. That's what you're doing, and it's not your fault. I'm sure someone somewhere had a, a computer screen and was looking at Pacific Lumber and looked at the Redwood Timberlands and said, here's the value per acre, here's the number of acres, here's what this property is worth. And when you look at the market value of those shares, they were selling at a far lower value than what someone thought he could do or get by liquidating those lands in the open market and raising some cash. But Max Sand comes out here try to liquidate the old growth to finance their junk bonds. I'm sorry, that just doesn't make it. And that's why we're here. We're not here because of the loggers. We're here because of Charles Hurwitz, some slime bitter from Texas. who's never seen a redwood in his life. Make four million dollars a year. That is ten times what the average mill worker will make in a lifetime. just want them to think that the environmentalists are causing the closure of mills when it's overcutting and drastic overcutting for a number of generations. The major corporations that have come in since the 50s with the bulldozers and chainsaws, they've consciously overcut continually with the idea of finishing off the forest and moving on, liquidating their assets and moving out. In the last 10 years has been an acceleration of the cutting of old growth. It's the automation! It's the multinational corporations, it's the companies that are mining the forests. They're hydrating, they're wasting, they're destroying fish and wildlife habitat. They're shipping raw logs out of here in the name of maximizing short-term profit. Those are the enemies of loggers, not environmentalists and natives. One, two, three. Been here 50 years, building all them fir trees we used to grow round the hills. But now they're running out of timber and the mill is shutting down. They're packing up their bandsaws and they're moving out of town. And they're closing down the mill at Potter Valley, leaving all us good folks in a hide. Pacific, and this is actually my favorite logging company. They're totally liquidating the forest. That's actually what they're doing where we live. But they're making it really easy for us to form an alliance with the loggers and mill workers because they are absolutely the crassest company I've ever seen. They shut down five mills this year, Potter Valley Mill being one of them. And uh, they just announced that they're opening 12 new mills in Ensenada, Mexico, where they can pay the workers $1.50 an hour. They busted the union in Mendocino County years ago, but I guess that wasn't enough. And um, so they're going to be taking 
the last of the redwoods on the north coast and shipping them to Mexico to be processed and sold in Southern California. So this is a song I wrote for my favorite company. You can say, help come in on the chorus, it's only one word. Haul it to the sawmill, gotta make the buck. Blades are worn and dangerous, better trust your luck. Don't stop for the worker's safety, never fear the worst. Cause if somebody kills himself, just blame it on earth first. There was an attempt on their life today, and the police are uh, trying to cover up what happened. I heard a crack, and then my whole head started to ring like a sitar in my head, like and the car came to a screeching halt, and then I heard somebody scream out, it's a bomb, there was a bomb. And then it all made sense that someone had tried to kill us. I have four breaks in my pelvis. My coccyx bone is crushed. I have limited feeling in my leg, and I don't know the extent to which it will recover. The unspeakable horrors that have been done to us are not in our hearts. The only way that we can succeed is if we answer their violence with our nonviolence. When the police indicate that you're under suspicion, the public tends to think you're being charged. We're not being charged with any crime at all. Uh, and yet they've confiscated many of our personal papers and belongings. They're not giving them back. They don't have to give them back for three years. This is obviously a harassment technique. See your technological society devour you before your very eyes. We hear your anguished cries exalting greed through progress. While you seek material advances, the sound of flowers dying. Carry messages through the wind trying to tell you about balance and your safety. But your minds are chained to your machines and the strings dangling from your puppeteer's hands, turning you, twisting you into forms and confusions beyond your control. We fortunately have discovered a tape recording an FBI agent made accidentally after he thought he turned his tape recorder off where he is telling other agents that it is a politically motivated case. He says something like, we aren't trying to get Foreman because he's a perpetrator of anything. We're trying to get him to send a message and that's all we're doing. I know that Earth First is a very, very loyal, very dedicated group to our environment and uh, they are very important to the movement. And when you become very important to the movement, the FBI knows that they have to silence you. When I heard about the bombing of Earth First activists, I, it immediately reminded me of the COINTEL programs against the American Indian movement. Leonard Peltier was accused of killing two FBI agents. The FBI knew that Leonard Paltier did not have any part in killing those two agents. So the ballistic reports from the FBI proved that Leonard Paltier did not fire that weapon, but yet uh, they never told the truth in court and they withheld those ballistic reports from his trial. And at this time, Leonard Paltier has exhausted all his remedies and he has not been able to get a new trial. Leonard Paltier was a voice. He was a strong leader. He had already been uh, designated as someone that they should apprehend and that they should silence, the same as the Earth First leader. It's sort of a situation where the law enforcement is acting as the right arm of corporate America and the mass media is acting as the left arm. You read that the, the victims have been apprehended and detained as suspects. And just that logic alone is kind of screwy to me. You know, you've got activism equated with violence when time and time again these people would speak in terms of defense of Mother Earth. 
they're distorting the truth, blaming the victims, and leaving the real issues, the real fundamental questions are remaining unasked. You know, whose interest is it, is this in, to have these two people bombed? I mean, it's, it's in the interests of the logging companies that they've been fighting against for the past several years. And the FBI and the police who don't want another Mississippi summer to go, because they know damn well that it is going to be another huge um, protest and that we are going to change consciousness. There's lots of room up there, and it's it's beautiful because we you know we're creating a community. Our kitchen is running off of solar power, which is really great. People have been donating food. A lot of people have you know called me up and and want to donate produce, want to donate food, want to help out in any way they can. So there is there's a lot of food up there. We've got a network set up up there in Mendocino and Humboldt counties already that's ready to accept these people as 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 they as they come in. And there's been an incredible amount of outreach to outside areas. We've got auto workers from Ohio. We've got Chicago Hollywood. homemakers, people from Hollywood, people from New York, people from Florida, people from Alaska, just mm -hmm. just everywhere. I mean, you know, some some people quit their jobs in Texas and and drove all the way out here sold to uh, yeah, sold sold all their worldly possessions so they could be. Uh, Redwood Summer Eco Warriors. Your mind for a job. Your mind for a TV. Your mind for a hair dryer. Your mind for consumption. With your atom bombs, your material bombs, your drug bombs, your racial bombs, your class bombs, your sexist bombs, your ageist bombs, devastating your natural shelters, making you homeless on Earth, chasing you into illusions, fooling you, making you pretend you can run away from the ravishing of your spirit. While the sound of flowers dying carry messages through the wind, trying to tell you about balance and your safety. There have been over 150 Earth First actions in Northern California over the past few years, and in not one of them has an Earth Firster ever used any sort of violence. We have an unbroken record of nonviolence, which we stand by. Peaceful demonstrations work when there's a lot of people. We have to just come in force and come in numbers and, uh, and come in a circle and come and pray. And uh, you know, the more and more that that circle comes, that the you know, more and more people unite and people of all colors. And uh, I think that we really need to get more than just white people and more than Indian people. I'd like to see you know, the Asians and I'd like to see the African people you know, out there as well because we all live on this earth. And you're going to see the American Indian movement out there in full force. So I'd like you all to spend a week or two up in Redwood Summer this year. Get non-violently trained in the Bay Area. Bring a little food, a little bit of money, a sleeping bag, a water canteen, some hiking boots. Be prepared to beat violence with non-violence, so don't bother coming at all. But remember, the revolution is just around the bay. I really like the poster about Redwood Summer where it says uh, the 90s are going to make the 60s look like the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're looking forward to that. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to see something make the 60s look like the 50s. Me too. <laughs> no compromise in defense of mother. We need massive numbers of people to be able to, to stop the machinery of destruction. And you know, you can be one you can be one of those people. You and your friends can be several of those people. The more the merrier. Come on up. We need you. That's all there is to it. There's there's no second chance once a, a two thousand year old tree is cut down, it's gone. And they're gonna be taking them out this summer. And this entire ecosystem that's unique to the planet 
is going to be gone forever. It's never going to come back. Have you seen your redwood forest Standing tall and proud and true There are those who would destroy her Lord, they don't know what they do Time will tell, time will tell. 